here on earth, it is only the prayers of people who have faith in Christ, people whose feet are in Christ, who can <coughs> deliver this world and bring the purpose of God on earth. People who are of faith in Christ Jesus. Could they call themselves call them so Christians? So when we say Christians, people are saying that, oh, we are Christians because we believe in Christ. Actually, that word Christians is not a proper word because it, it connotes, it has some connotation. For example, saying somebody is a Muslim, somebody is a Buddhist, or somebody is a, maybe a Hindus. What you are trying to say is that the person is following somebody maybe called Muhammad, who is a prophet, somebody called Buddha, somebody. So if you say you are a Christian, it means that in your mind, Christ is a prophet. Because then you are placing yourself in that notion, in that mind that this is a prophet. So I'm following Christ, so since it's a Christ, then I'm also a Christian. Just as the Muslim would describe themselves, we are disciples of Muhammad. These are disciples of Buddha. These are disciples of Buddhist, uh, what, Hindu. So, if you say you are a Christian, then you are saying the same thing. Oh, I am a disciple of Christ. So, you, you are saying in your mind that Christ is also a prophet. But Christ is not a prophet or just a messenger of God. Christ is your life. Why is it your life? You know, we have Adam and then Christ came later. So Adam and Christ are fathers of human beings. So it depends on when you say, I believe in Christ, then you are saying that, well, Adam and Christ, I choose Christ because I'm now the offspring of Christ. So Christ become your seed or the, uh, the, 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 the what they call it a father or your tree that's what christian Christ, christ is all about but if you say christianity you are talking about religion or you are a christian so the faith in christ makes you a new creature another human being who is not after Adam, but you are after Christ. Now, the faith in Christ makes you the child of God. The word of God said, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Because anyone who has been immersed in Christ by believing in Christ, have put on Christ. That is the letter to the trade. When we begin from verse 22, it's saying that the scripture has put everybody under sin. That the faith, the promise of God, that promise that you become a child of God, is given to only people who believe in Jesus Christ. This is why you need to understand. If somebody does not believe in Jesus Christ, that promise of God is not fulfilling the person's life. The moment you believe in Christ, the promise of God is now fulfilled in your life. You become a child of God. But why is it important that somebody become a child of God? Is it just because God wants to have children and then boost him? These are my children. Or you say, oh, I'm a child of God. Is that all? No. The reason why you become a child of God, why God needs children of God, why Jesus died for you to become a child of God, why Jesus came to the earth and preaching people should believe in him is that God will get, will get people who are able to subdue this earth, who will be able to bring God's purpose. So it is your prayers that will deliver this world. Your prayers. It is your prayers that will bring the purpose and the will of God to this earth. Your prayer, that's why God needs you. Other than that, why should God worry himself? Why should Christ have to die? Is it because he wants to save human beings? Then why can't God save everybody in the world? Then God even doesn't need Christ to die. If God wants to save the world, he created the world. He can save everybody in the world without 
letting Jesus die. But the death of Jesus is bringing people out. They are the ones who are going to bring the will of God here on earth. Before even Christ will come to destroy people who are against God. Before Jesus will come to destroy people who will not believe in God because there are people who will never believe in Christ. But it is not a surprise because if even you have children, not everybody will become maybe what you want if you have your own children, a few children you have. So you can't say that about a billion who are living in the world today, everybody will conform to God. No. But you have to understand if you stand somewhere, maybe you are praying to God to come and do something. God, come and help us. God, come and deliver us. God, oh, why can't you save these people? First of all, ask yourself, why then did God need you? If God can, should come and do it. If that's your prayer, God should come to heaven, from heaven to do this. Ask yourself, why then are you, should God invest so much in you? For what? Or if you are saying that God should use devils to do his own will, then what is your importance? Then why are you a child of God? If devils are there for God to use them, then why are you a Christian? Why do you even call yourself a Christian? Let me use that word. Then you, you, you are making yourself useless. If that is what is in your mind. If we go to church today and all of us are looking for miracles, God, come and help us. Then we are becoming useless because we are the ones who are supposed to perform the miracles. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out devils. So they will be, be the deliverers, isn't that? They are going to deliver the world from the devils. Those who believe in me, and we come to church and we are singing praises to Jesus and we are still calling somebody to come and deliver us. Then what is our use? He said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out devils. He didn't say God will do that. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. They who believe in me, they use my name to cast out devils. The verse 18, the last word, they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. It didn't say God will come and lay hands on them. It didn't say pastors. So if we gather in the church and the pastor call all of us to in front and he lay hands on us to recover, then <laughs> what is our use? Why is even the pastor teaching the people? What is he teaching the people? If the pastor is not teaching the people to believe, to lay for them to lay their hands. Because this is what Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 15. He told the apostles, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Those who believe will be safe. Those who will not believe, they will be down. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they. He didn't say the apostles. Who are the they here? The those who will receive the word. So the apostles' duty is to preach the gospel to the people because faith in the gospel will save the people. If the people don't believe in the gospel, they will be damned. And this is the sign that will show that the people will believe. They will cast out devils so that the world will be at a peaceful place. So if we have Christians, Christian majority in the country and evils are ruling there, then the, all the Christians there are useless. God is not using, God, they are not allowing, they are not doing the, what God even want them to do in the first place. Because, it, and the reason is that the pastors are not teaching them to believe. If the, all the Christians are all trooping to one person for healing, then that person is not teaching them to believe. Because if he's teaching them to believe, they who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will rather go out into the whole nation and be healing people. They will speak tongues <laughs> when they believe. They will lift up serpents. This is what Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. So what the apostles did, Jesus, after saying these things, he went up to heaven and sat down. What the apostles did, they went everywhere and do what? 
preach the word. And they didn't say they didn't go everywhere to cast out devils or hate people. Because the essence here is for the people to believe in the gospel. So preachers are needed. Paul said in Romans chapter 10, from verse 14, if you don't send anybody, how would they believe? So preachers, he said preachers, how beautiful are the feet of preachers who bring the good, the good news to the people? But he said, but they all, not all have believed the gospel. Because as I said, who have believed our report? So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And this word of God is the word preached by the gospel. Then he asked the question, have they not heard? Of course. He said they hear the word, but they do not believe it. So the apostles' duty, pastor's duty, evangelist duty, teacher's duty, is to convince the church to believe so that they become perfect and go out there and minister God's redemption. Minister God's deliverance. Minister God's healing. Imagine if over getting to about 4 billion people believe in Christ, if all of them understand Christ, would there be any problem on earth? Do you, do you know what 4 billion people who have this faith, if they are really doing the will of God, do you know what it means for this earth? Because Jesus alone came and he was casting out devils in them. He said, if I with the finger of God cast out devil, the kingdom of God is come upon this earth. Because if a strong man controlling everything, all his goods are intact. But when somebody stronger than him come upon him, he will take everything from his hand. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11. When he taught, the, the disciples were asking him to teach them to pray as John the Baptist, who was a prophet, teaching the disciples. He said, now when you pray, say, our father, that is the game changer. Our father, it means we're a child of God. You don't pray like prophets. Our father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. You are insisting the kingdom of God to come. Your will be done here on earth, as it is in heaven. Look at this. Your prayer is that the will of God be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And that is not just saying. He said, when you are praying, say this word. It means that insist that this thing happens on earth. Then if you come to the verse 20, just look at 11, 1 to 2. If you come to the verse 20, he said, but, but if I were the finger of God, I, it means I am responsible. If I with the finger of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Because when a stronger person, stronger than Satan, because if you are casting out devils, including Satan himself, then of course you are stronger. If somebody who is stronger than Satan come upon him, he will take everything he has. So, we are supposed to seize Satan and take everything that he's having. We are the ones to do that, not God. In John chapter 14, verse 10, Jesus said to the apostles, believe that I am in God and God is in me. You see, this is what your faith should count. I will show you what it means by your faith. He said, believe that I am in God and God is in me. It's believe in the words that I'm speaking. The words I speak is the Father in me who does the work. That is John 14, 10. Verse 12, John 14, John chapter 14, the verse 12, he said, very, very, I say unto you, anyone who believes in me, the works that I do, he can also do, and even do greater, for I'm going to the Father. And whatever you shall ask in my name, the Son will do it. So the Father will be glorified in the Son. If you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. You see, sometimes, I, 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 I spent this some time ago to you here. You look at CFO. Uh, Jesus is saying that when we pray in his name, he will come from heaven and do it. Because he says, I'm going to the Father. 
see, you don't understand this contest very well. That is why maybe you may argue like that. He said, the work that I do is the Father in me who does the work. Anyone who believes in me, what I do, he can also do and do greater. Because I went to the Father. Now, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, you see now, what's going on? This is where your faith means. When Jesus was walking on the planet Earth, casting out the earth and healing, everybody saw that he was doing it. Isn't it? But he says to my father, who is doing it? It is only Jesus who knew that the father is the one who is doing it. The, the people outside do not see the father because the father is in him. So when he speaks a word, Satan, get out! And Satan is <laughs> running away. People saw that Jesus is doing that. But the father is in him. And it's only Jesus who knew that the father is in him. Because you don't, can't see him. You see only him like this. Now Jesus is saying that if you believe in me, you can do the same. What does it mean? It means that the Father is in you. That's what 1 John 5, 1 John uh, 4, 15 is saying. Anyone who believes that, who confess that Jesus is Christ, God is in him and he is in God. So 1 John 4, 4 is saying that greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. But nobody sees who is in you. Everybody sees you. Then he said, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. Now what is he trying to imply? You are the body of Christ. You. Ephesians 5.30 says, we are his flesh and bones. So if he say, I will do it, he's talking about you performing it. Because you become his body. Christ is in you, and in Christ is the Father. So your faith here, it is you who alone should know this. Not the person you are speaking to. You speak in the name of Jesus. Something happened. People say, oh, wow. Look at Brother Andrew. He's a very anointed. But they don't know who is working in you. It is only you who knows that. Who knows who is working. It's only you who knows who you are. I'm the body of Christ. I am Christ's bones and his flesh. In me is the Father. So the words I'm speaking, I know who is working. So Jesus said, have faith in God. Whosoever will say to this mountain, because me, I know who is in me. I know who I am. So the words I'm speaking, you see me as if I'm so anointed. But I know it is my faith. My faith, the faith, I know what is working. Who is working. And the power that is working inside me. I know it. So when I'm walking, you can sit somewhere and maybe say something about me. Try to cast me. Try to cast a spell upon me. Because you don't know who is in me. And before you realize, you destroy yourself. Why? Because it will bond back to you. I know what is inside me. I'm not bragging, but I know who is in me and who is working in me. And when I speak, I know the authority behind the words I've spoken. That is your faith. When somebody starts maybe doing something, casting spells and destroying people, maybe he's a commander of a, a national army. He's you, you can't shoot him. If you shoot him, you'll not die. The person knows what is working inside him. Because you don't know where the person is coming from. You just see the person. There are people you meet in the streets. Maybe you, 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 you uh, believe in Christ or you don't believe in Christ. Or if you, you believe in Christ, but if you don't even know who you believe. You don't know who you are. And so you are following all kinds of deceptions. Then you meet somebody in the street, maybe you abuse the person. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the person is maybe a demon. The person is a witch, a wizard. He's a child of a devil. Then he will destroy you. Because you are following some deception, so you will even you are under their canopy. Because you don't understand things you are preaching here. You go to church. And where are you praying from? The book of Psalms. 
<laughs> you see, sometimes I, I, sometimes it's funny, but <laughs> you are you are praying the prayers of Exodus, prayers of uh, Daniel. Your, prayer, prayer, your wisdom, your wisdom and understanding is made up of things written in Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. That's what you use to argument. You, you, you don't even understand what the Bible is all about. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation, see, you can summarize it. I have preached this Bible for, when did I start preaching? 1976. If you ask me, sometimes I don't even need to read the Bible. I know everything inside the Bible. In fact, I know, if you mean you, you forgot a verse, just tell me the words there. I can tell you where the verse is. Not that I just quote the word. I can summarize everything what it means. From Genesis to Malachi, it's just, <laughs> it's just preparing people the other things that are shadow. When Christ came, he said everything ended in Christ. How? Because a new creature has now started. So all what was prepared from Genesis is because of you. Now Christ has come to die and has brought you out. And what does it mean? You have become like Christ himself. Now, God needs you. That's why he created you. You are to pray to bring the will of God here on earth. Because God is inside you. That's what the Bible is about. If you can't function this way, you are definitely going to be destroyed. If you're still going back to practice Genesis, or practice Exodus, or Malachi, <laughs> you are destroying yourself. That means you don't believe. That's what it means that you don't believe. If you sit in a church and pray to God from heaven, come and do this for me. When Satan, even Satan and devils, are doing things here, performing actions here on earth, and you say you are a child of God, and you still want God to come and do things here, don't you see people ruling nations? People are ruling nations. By whose power? The demonic powers. But and you are crying in the church for God to come to heaven to help you. Then what is your use? You see, we, we need to strengthen ourselves in these things. We don't just to sit down and think, well. When Christ comes, then we will be saved to heaven. That is nonsense. If, it, if that is the only reason why God is saving you, then the moment you believe in Christ, you will die. Then you, God will take you away. Then you don't need to stay here on earth. Then Jesus will never say, I'm going to the Father, so you take care. Then why, why? Take care of who? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 20, you are ambassadors for Christ. So if you don't know the work of an ambassador, go and read what ambassadors do. And who are ambassadors? So you are not on earth here functionless. God needs you to pray. Your prayer is just a word taking authority on earth here. Now, is Satan actually even persecuting everybody? Satan. You see, when people talk about Satan, talk about demons, and they are even afraid of these creatures, sometimes I don't understand. And these people are Christians. From even what we are saying, what the Bible is telling you, what you have, Satan doesn't have even just a small of it. Satan doesn't have it. The word of God is saying, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Whatever in the world. Jesus is saying, have faith in God. Everything you say, take this one to be removed. Nobody can stop it. If Satan is there to stop it, he will not say that. Whatever you will say, get here. It will obey you. And nothing shall be impossible to you. If Satan can stop you in any way, Jesus will not say that to you. Seventy disciples came to me and said, if in your name, the devils are subject to this. Jesus said, yes, I saw Satan falling down like lightning. I give you power. Trample down over serpents and scorpions and fire. All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Look at the 10 verse 17 to 19. So, if you still sit in your churches or in your home and you are afraid of a witch, 
then you are very miserable. You don't understand. You don't want to understand Christ or even believe. With all these words that Jesus is saying, and I don't blame the church members. I blame the pastors and apostles because of their stomach. I see the pastor who is arranging a whole all night prayer. And you know prayer they are praying? The book of Psalms. I said, why are you wasting people's time? You are a worker of iniquity for what you are doing. You are making all the people useless. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be a child. You can be whatever. When you have faith in Christ, you have become different as your, your structure doesn't count again because he who is in you is now the matter he matters so you need understanding you need wisdom knowledge in all these things satan is a miserable creature because now we have people like christ here on earth they are like christ and satan is afraid of these people but even satan is not even afraid of you Satan was, was not cast on earth because of you. When Satan came on earth, it was a remnant of people he started to pursue. Not everybody even on earth. And again, do you know what Satan said to Jesus? You see the kingdom of this world. I give the people I want. So there are some people who even are prospering from Satan. So, Satan is not on earth just to disturb everybody. And if even you are a Christian, Satan is terrified of you. He doesn't even want to come closer to you. If Satan is pursuing your dreams, it means that you have been deceived. If you are crying for deliverance everywhere, it means you have been deceived. You have been ignorant. Because the apostles, the prophets in Christ, and then the evangelists, the teachers and the pastors, what they are supposed to teach is for the members to recognize that they have the same structure as Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 14. So they will not be deceived again. But this is not what they are teaching you. Because of money. They are teaching you tight so that they can get money. Which is so nonsense. So do you think God created human beings because of money? But what is money to God? God doesn't need money for anything. You need it. So because of that, God is saying, that, hey, God said, give me money. For what? And people are, have the guts to teach this to people. And they are not even afraid. But, you know, Satan, when he was dropped into the earth, if you read Revelation chapter 12, he pursued a remnant of a people. And this remnant means very small number. That's what remnant means. Mm -hmm. If you take, for example, a million of people, and you are take, say a remnant of that million, they are less than hundred. And who are these people? Revelation chapter twelve, verse seventeen. He said he pursued, he persecuted a remnant of the woman. Who gave birth to the man child? The woman who gave birth to a man child, the remnant, not everybody of that woman, seed. The seed of that woman who gave birth to the man child, who has the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, who is that woman? Israel, isn't it? Because Israel gave birth to Christ, the man child is Christ. That is Revelation chapter 12. It's talking about Israel and Christ. The woman with 12 crowns on his head. 12 tribes of Israel. He gave birth to Christ. The man child is Christ. And Satan, when he was cast down to the earth, pursued the seed of that woman. That woman is Israel. So he pursued the Jews who had the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he pursued the Jewish, today we call Jewish Christians, there's nothing like Jewish Christians, the Jewish who are disciples of Christ. That's what Satan was pursuing. And they are a very small number, a remnant. So Satan did not attack anybody from Nigeria, Ghana, or Germany. It's only the Israelites, the Jews, who believe in Christ. 
that Satan was even chasing. And, and guess who he was using to chase them? The same Israelites the, called the Pharisees. So even in that same Israel, there are some of them who Satan is helping. Satan was not attacking everybody in Israel. <laughs> so make that mistake. So understand that what is written in the Bible. Understand it very well. I know in the Bible there are certain places where words have been put in the mouth of Jesus, even Jesus himself. <laughs> there are still some manipulations. But you see, it's not about the manipulations. Because you have to understand the whole Bible as a whole, not just a verse. So if somebody even manipulated something, it shouldn't even affect you because you understand the whole thing as a family. So one verse should not even deceive you. Now, what is important now is the lesson from the deception of Moses. And I think that, that time we met, we learned about how Moses was deceived, and the Israel and the whole world. The lessons, Christians, or people who say they believe in Christ, that's what I, I want to call them, so that they will know that I'm talking to them. They are not looking at the deceptions and the lessons from that deception that come to Moses. And that's what they are not looking at. You know, why, why we say that to Satan who deceived Moses? Because if it is God who was talking to Moses from Sinai, why would Jesus come and say, the people come to you and said, Moses said, anybody who commit adultery we should kill the person. And Jesus is saying that you are of your father the devil. When it is God who gave, if the God give that commandment, <laughs> let's say God give that commandment, because that commandment, that shall not commit adultery, was given from Mount Sinai. It was written on stones. Ezra chapter 17. Now, somebody has committed offense against that commandment. And they brought her to you, Jesus. And they said, Jesus said, that person should be killed because that's also what is written in Leviticus 20 verse 10. Leviticus 20 verse 10 said, anybody who commits adultery with somebody's wife, that man and that woman should be killed. And he said, it's the Lord who said it. Now, the person has committed adultery according to the scripture, what has been written now in the law. Moses said, should kill the person. Jesus, what do you think? Then you are telling me that my following my father, the devil. Because the devil is the murderer from the beginning. And he's a liar. He lied to everybody. Tell you that the one who gave that commandment from Sinai was not God. It was Satan. That's what it means. So, when you read John chapter 8, 3 to 5, and then go to verse 44. He told them to the extent that he told them verse 47 that you are not of God. Anybody of God hear me, not Moses. So to tell you that everything that was given to Moses there did not come from God, it came from Satan. Now, Paul was a Pharisee, was one of them, isn't it? At the 26, verse 4 and 5, then we go to verse 9 to verse 20. At the 26, verse 4 to 5. Paul said, my manner of life from my beginning, everybody knows me, as the Jews, I live as a Pharisee. Verse 9, I ought to do some things very wicked against Christ. Then when the Christ knocked him down, what was he doing? He was persecuting this remnant who appear in Revelation chapter 12. And who is Satan using? Paul and the Pharisees. And when he was knocked down, <laughs> he said, but who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus you are persecuting. Because these people are the body of Christ. So if you touch them, just say, why you touch Jesus? Because Jesus is the head and they are the body. So if you say you believe in Christ, that's what you are. If somebody hits you, you have hit Christ. Because you are the body of Christ. You are his bone and his flesh. So he said, you are persecuting me, Paul. I'm Jesus you are persecuting. So, oh Lord, what should I do? It's okay, but rise. The reason why I appear to you, I'm coming to deliver you from the people, the Jews, and from the Gentiles. And I'm sending you to them. Go and open, look at the words there. Acts 26 verse 18. Look at the words there. Go and open their eyes. Turn them from darkness to light. 
from the power of Satan to God. <laughs> so what is the why is Satan why is Satan doing here? You see, Paul was one of them who was following those instructions, those commandments. Jesus wanted to apply that you were following Satan. So go ahead and turn the people, turn them from those commandments and bring them to me. Because those things were given by Satan and God intentionally allowed that. So Christ can die. Now, but the lessons here, people still don't believe that Yahweh was a Satan. Yahweh is not God. He was, it's not the name of God. If he told Moses that, you see, even Abraham, Isaac and Jacob did not call me that. So, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Egypt, is not called Yahweh. It's called El Shaddai, God Almighty. He told, because, you see, Satan, do you know something I like about Satan? <laughs> you say, I like something about Satan. Do you know why? He first of all tells you the truth before he tells you the lies. He came to Eve and said, God, has God said you should not eat the tree? Exactly, that's what God said. <laughs> you see, before he can deceive you. Why? Because if you don't allow the person chance to know what God is saying and you will just deceive the person the person will not work because the person is ignorant and Jesus prayer is that Father forgive them because they don't know but Satan will let you to know first before he can deceive you that is what Satan does do you know what you see if everybody hear all the truth in God. Somebody teaches you all the truth in God and added one lie that destroy you. And that's what they do. One. Why? Because look at what Paul said in Galatians 5, verse 4. He said, Christ become of no effect. Christ is neutralized. The power of God is neutralized in you. Any one of you who justified us all by the law, the law which was given to Moses. You fall from the grace. And look at verse 8 and 9, Galatians chapter 5. He said, This persuasion is not from the one who called you, and who called you? God the Father himself. Not even Christ called you. God the Father calls you. John 6, 44, 45, Jesus said, If my Father has not called you, you can't come to me. And now Paul is saying in Galatians 5, 8 that, Anyone who justify yourself by the law of Moses is not from God who called you, which means it's from Satan. Verse 9, Galatians chapter 5. A little living, little, not so much. Leaving the whole blood, the whole uh, loaf, it destroyed everything. Leaving. So Jesus was talking to them in Matthew chapter 16. Verse 6. He said, Beware of the living of the fallacies. And verse 12, they got to know that he was talking about their doctrines. This is what every Christian should be particularly careful. Those things that are written in the Old Testament, they destroy every little. When a little, when you are even singing the song that is inside the Old Testament, your power, the Christ power, cannot work inside you. Your prayer will become useless and you'll be crying for deliverance, you yourself. Because very little. Somebody is praising God using the book of Psalms. And people think the book of Psalms is not a law. Look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Look at what Jesus said. Everything from Genesis to Malachi is called a law. The same time they will call the law and the prophet. Everything. If you are praying the book of Psalms, your prayer, your, your Christ power will not work inside you. If you are debating with Proverbs, and the Proverbs says, I'm <laughs> that's what you are, your debate is. You are a useless person in Christ. That's what it means. You are praying like Daniel. You are praying like Moses. Somebody who's supposed to, Moses himself was deceived by Satan. Have you read anything in the book of the Old Testament, the books of the Old Testament, where somebody cast out devil before? You have that power because the power of Christ is working inside you. And even, even, 
Jesus said, John chapter 5, verse 36 to 40, that his father did not talk to anybody at any time, and nobody even see him. <laughs> He's talking to the Jews. They don't even have his word inside him. Because everything that's written in the scripture, Genesis to Malachi, was concerning him. His father was not mentioned there. So, wait a minute. If God, Jesus said, pray, if you pray, say, our father. And the father was not mentioned in the Old Testament. What do you think that justifying yourself? The word here is not reading it and observing the things there. Justifying yourself. Trying to do the worst there. And you know, the Pharisees are very intelligent. Matthew chapter 23, Jesus warned the people and the disciples. Matthew 23 verse 1, he said, he spoke to the multitude and the disciples that the, the Pharisees and the scribes, they sit on the seat of Moses. So everything they do, observe, everything they teach, observe it. But their works, don't do their works. Because even they themselves don't do their works. Because Paul, when Paul was delivered, do you know what he said? That's why I was going to do Pharisees or those who are deceiving the people. They are very, very intelligent. Paul said, as many as are of the works of the law under curse. Galatians 3 10. So they know it. So when they are teaching the people, they themselves never do it. Because Paul said it is written that curse everyone that will not observe to do all that is written in the book of Moses, the book of the law. If you can do all, and there is no possibility for anybody to do everything, and they knew it. So Jesus said, they teach you to do it, but they never touch it with their finger. They never touch it. And then he said, but woe unto you, you fellas, hypocrites. Do you know what it means to be a hypocrite? You are teaching somebody to do something, but you yourself, you are not doing it. That's a hypocrite. Woe, but woe unto you, scribe and fellas, hypocrites. You brought people from entering to the kingdom of God. You yourself is not going in, but you don't allow them to go in. They deceive them by the words of Moses. They don't do it. They themselves don't touch it. They tell them to pay tithe, but they never pay any tithe. Pastors don't never pay tithe. I'm telling you. They will tell you, oh, we pay tithe. Look at this. If all of you pay tithe to me, come to the church. It's not me who is coming. If I come to you on Sunday and said, I pay tithe 100 million, where do I get the money from? It's your money I just used to. I was in a church. I was a leader of a church, we know what we're doing, executives. If we need money, do you know what we, how we plan? We said, we are going to raise funds. All you executives, bring money. Everybody should bring $200. When we finish, we'll give everything back to you. We'll give your money back to you. So if you see me putting 1000 euro into the bowl and you follow me, you'll be a loser because I'll get my 1000 back when we finish. That's what we're doing. The pastors don't pay tithe because the tithe is going to them. So they never lift that thing with their finger. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, all what they do, they do for the people to see that if they are doing it, but secretly they are not doing it. Read Matthew 23 very carefully what Jesus is saying. Then he cursed them, woe unto you. So why should we be following them? John chapter 10, this is what Jesus said. I want to prove to you that Psalms is also called law, if you don't know. So if somebody is asking to do or play Psalms, you are playing the law, and you become very useless. You see, he said, 34, Jesus said something, John chapter 10. Now, this is what he said. He said, verse 30, I, my father, we are one. Then they used two stones to, to pick up stone to kill him. Then he said, why are you killing me? I've done so many good works. Which one do you want to kill me? Or? He said, we are not killing you because of the good works. But we are killing you because of you. You are making yourself as God. Saying you and God are one. If God is in my body, if God is inside me, I'm not no one with him. He said, the father is in me. If the father is in my body, are we not one person? 
Are we two? We are one person. He said the same thing in John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip asked him, show him the father. He said, Father, you haven't seen me. The father is in me. The father is a spirit. You can't see him. He's inside me. So if you see me, you have seen the father. People say, oh, then Jesus is the father. No, he said, the father is in me. I am the body of the father. So I, my father, we are one. They say, oh, you are blaspheming. Then he said, why? Then he said, but you making yourself as if as God. Verse 34, Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law and that I said you are God? This is in Psalm 82 verse 6. So Jesus is calling Psalm 82 verse 6 a law. It's a law. It's a part of the law. <laughs> and then look at Luke chapter 24. Somebody will tell you that Genesis is not a law. Genesis. But Genesis, Exodus, were written and numbers. They were all written from Sinai. Moses did not read, write them in his house. He write them from Sinai. Who told Moses how God created <laughs> The Satan who came and you see, there were so many angels who were talking to Moses. So not everyone was a devil. The one who came to uh, Moses in the burning bush was the Satan. That who said, My name is called Yahweh. And that's the name that Israelites call God. But I don't know why Christians also are picking it. Jehovah, 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 and praising themselves. And they are praising Satan. They didn't know. Now, Luke chapter 14. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 24. Look at verse 44. Jesus said, Luke, 40, Luke 24, 44. These are the words which I have spoken to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophet in the Psalm concerning me. So all of them are grouped together. <laughs> they, are, they are the same. Paul said, the people who are watching the Old Testament, worshiping, not reading them. You need to understand the Old Testament. There are certain things they're supposed to obey. Certain things the Old Testament is supposed to obey. But to know to the West, there are certain things about, let me use the word, observe and do. For example, if you are reading Isaiah 61, it's the same word that Jesus read. So if you want to understand what Jesus read in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, read Isaiah 61. You see all the things there. What come out of the gospel? Isaiah chapter 60, he said, now your light has come. Isaiah 54. They are all very good. There are certain things, and especially, for example, Jeremiah 31, from 31 to 34. It's telling you that the Old Testament was after time. After time, God was saying that the days come that I will take this away and establish a new one. These are all things teaching you to observe and do. If I say that, well, God is telling me that the Old Testament, a day will come that our boys should be keep because even that Old Testament you couldn't obey it. Now I'm going to make a new covenant. If you go to Hebrews chapter 8 from verse 6 to 13. Verse 13 says, now when they say new, now the old is obsolete. It's no more working. So you have to obey this one and do them. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17 to 20, don't think that come to destroy the law. There are things inside that you should observe and do. But your righteousness should be more than that of the Pharisees. Because the righteousness live by the righteousness to come by the law, which is no more working. The lessons. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 15 to 68, there are things there which Moses said. If you can obey all these things, all these curses will come upon you, including becoming a slave and be sold on Black Friday. If you look at it carefully, you see, there was somebody making a video who said, we are devils. We are sorry for what you have done. Sometimes people think, <laughs> you just see this, this. You see, listen carefully. Even the word of God, in their own attitude, prove that they are not human beings. 
They, he said, we are not human beings. <laughs> we, we, we come to deceive you. Look, if you take the world, people who live Africa, south of Africa, south of America, Central America and South America, people who live in South Asia, excluding people who migrated from Europe to that side, look at them. They are the ones who are being affected. People who live in the northern part of the world, maybe in Europe, North America, <laughs> China, or <laughs> they are not affected as people who live in the south. Ask yourself, <laughs> who, who is human and who is inhuman? Because you see, look at the, the, the cases there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. 15 to 68. It's the devil who is operating this one. So who do you think devil will affect with those things? Devil will never affect his children with the same cases that he's pronouncing. So definitely, if somebody is found among you who is not human, it depends it's inhuman. It's Satan who is... God created everything. You see, we, we were fighting about something, so, something on ago. Who created Satan? It's God who created everything. God created Satan, created everything. But for a purpose and for a time. Now he's saying that, now cast them away. So if you look at who people are being, who people who are being affected by the curses which Satan pronounced by Moses, you can know who actually is on the side of God and who is against God. We see, human beings have so many colors. It's not only one color. There are people in the northern hemisphere, I recall it, who are also of God. And their color is not black, fine. And there are people who are in the south, maybe their color is brown or black, who are also not of God. So it's also there. Because this thing doesn't have to do with colors. <laughs> you know, maybe which, where you come from. But you need to understand by the lessons of the deception of Moses. Who are the people who have been affected, deceived and affected? Then you will know who is on the side of God and who is not side of God. Human and inhuman. And then you will know, how should I pray? So when somebody comes into you and says, oh, you know, you see, every Christianity that is worshipped in these areas, Central America, South America, South Africa, South and Sahara, Asia, South. They all come from <laughs> some places. They are not from the people themselves. And there are a whole lot of divisions, or we call denominations. All of them pack on them because they are not using their mind. And this same thing they said, if you obey all these things, God will bless you. They obey and they are rather being <laughs> affected. Because they don't want to understand. God, will you bless you. Let's turn our feet. We want to pray. Do anybody have any question? Maybe I think we should have time.